Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my third uh, <coughs> research article. Today I'll, I'll be discussing inflammation as a treatment target after myocardial infarction in an editorial by uh, Dr. Newby um, from the New England Journal uh, published in December 26, 2019. This article editorial was mostly based on the uh, recent data that was um, published in New England Journal in, De in December of this year um, by the trial uh, Canto. Uh, this trial essentially looked at the efficacy and safety of low-dose coltracine after myocardial infarction, uh, and there were some very good results from that, um, which we'll, we'll go over in a few minutes. Um, but essentially, uh, the, the, really the, the, the issue or the, um, the evidence behind uh, inflammation as a, tar as a treatment target began initially with, um, with a different trial called CANTOS, um, sorry, the other trial that I mentioned in December was called Colcott, and the, the one before that was called CONTOS, which is the Kanakinabab Anti-Inflammatory Thrombosis Outcome Study. Um, and really what it looked at is uh, seeing, knowing the idea that inflammation potentially could be a central role in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis and acute coronary events. Um, this study, and we do know that there is, has been some benefits, right, uh, because we do provide statins as well as aspirin for secondary preventions for coronary artery disease, um, and those have reduced inflammation. So we want, they, this study looked at potentially trying an immunoglobulin, um, seeing if that provides any uh, protection against inflammation and therefore against uh, possibly as a, as a source for effective treatment in cr on chronic coronary artery disease. Um, so this monoclonal antibody actually inhibits the interleukin 1B, um, and th during the study they actually did see that there was a reduction in the CRP, um, and in, in the endpoint they, they did have modest lower risk for the composite endpoint of death from the cardiovascular uh, standpoint, including myocardial infarction or stroke uh, when compared to placebo. Um, so th the reason for um, the future study, the CALCAT, was based on this study um, and seeing if the only drawback between the the CONTO study was that the immunoglobulin monoclonal antibody, as you all know, does cause a lot of significant immunosuppression. So the CALCAT wanted to make sure, and it, it's going to be hard to really convince any clinician to provide this medication because of the cost as well as the known side effects. So CALCAT was really a trial to look to see, you know, given the data that we have with inflammation, can we give potentially a, uh, an agent such as coltracine that's low dose uh, with lower risks for um, adverse events and potentially have the same um, re reduction in, um, in stroke as well as myocardial infarction. Um, so the, the study was a pretty large study. It was randomly assigned um, controlled trial. Um, it was double blinded. Um, and what it looked at was specifically the kind of the outcome, the primary endpoint of uh, mortality. Let me see. Uh, so the primary efficacy endpoint was a composite death from cardiovascular causes, uh, resuscitated cardiac arrest, myocardial infarction, stroke, or really in any need for urgent hospitalization after an angina, anginal event leading to coronary revascularization. Um, they also looked at primary endpoint and safety um, safety uh, endpoints as well that we're looking at. But the study itself was 47, it was a pretty large study, it was 40,745 40, patients that were enrolled. Um, uh, half of them were assigned to the culture scene, which was about 2366, and 2379 were assigned to the placebo group. Um, and they followed these patients for an average of like 22.6 months, which is equivalent to about closer to a year, two years. Um, the primary endpoint um, occurred in 5.5% in of the patients in the cultrosine group. And, uh, and just as a reminder, the primary endpoint was composite death from cardiovascular causes. Um, only 5.5% of patients after two years had another cardiac event. As compared to patients uh, in the placebo group, which where 7.1% of those patients had another recurrent uh, cardiovascular event, including myocardial infarction stroke or urgent need for hospitalization for leading to coronary revascularization. So um, only like around 2.2, um, greater than 2% greater in the placebo group. Um, the It was clinically significant with a p-value of 0.02, um, and the high hazard ratio was less than 1 at 0.84. Uh, meaning there was a reduction um, in death as well as cardiovascular causes in patients 
with the culture scene group. Um, myocardial infarction actually did have um, a significant drop of 0.91. So I'm not going to go over the late data. Um, I feel like a lot of this is just numbers. So I urge you guys to look at the numbers that I'm reading off um, to be, have a better idea. But it's, it, essentially the, the, the conclusion was that uh, among patients with recent myocardial infarction, culture seen at a dose of 0.5 daily led to a significant lower risk of ischemic cardiovascular events than the placebo group. Um, so I think it's very important for us to kind of be aware of this. Um, and then the other thing really, uh, so what would be the next step uh, in terms of uh, having this data with the Calcott study and the Kanto study? Um, so th I think the big idea is being able to target specifically, at this point, both the culture scene as well as the uh, monoclonal um, did have a lot of um, adverse events. So what other medication can we give these patients to have more of a unique mechanism in which we are able to target exactly atherosclerotic inflammatory changes in the coronary vessels um, instead of the um, gastric arteries or anything like that to reduce adverse events for GI bleed uh, and specifically just target uh, inflammatory changes specifically in the myocardium. So that'll be the next step. That'll be, I think that'll be the next uh, frontier that we target. Um, and we'll start, I think we'll definitely start seeing an implementation of uh, what I call the triple therapy, you know, aspirin, statin, and, uh, and another um, NSAID, I think, would probably be the next step. Um, so thank you guys for listening. I think this is a very important study. Um, but we'll see a big impact this in the coming years, and we'll start seeing a huge d d a reduction in uh, mortality in uh, patients um, with myocardial infarctions.